This is Mulligan Stew, the podcast. I'm Terry David Mulligan. This week on the show, my feature conversation with Sarnia-born singer-songwriter Donovan Woods. These days, Donovan splits his time between Toronto and Nashville. And when he's in Music City, he's writing evocative story songs for country acts like Tim McGraw. When he's not writing hits for other musicians, he's earning Polaris Prize and Canadian Folk Music Award nominations for his own records and earning accolades from the likes of Rolling Stone, which describes his sound as sincere, literate folk rock that doesn't hold back on the hooks. Oh, he's got the hooks. This spring, he's celebrating the release of his fifth full-length album, Both Ways. Coming up, my feature conversation with Donovan Woods. But first, from the new record, this is Donovan Woods with our friend Bobby. Cops found him on a Sunday So we all met up Monday night I guess we always kind of figured this might happen someday It's just a drag that we were Everybody telling me that he's in heaven He's probably smiling down on us right now But judging by the kind of stuff he was all mixed up in Even I have my doubts Drink warm for our friend Bobby His car had all through On accident, on purpose, darling Even now, don't know Drink one for our friend Bob Open them gates and let him in On accident, on purpose, darling Those are pretty much the same name My dad called him the neighbor kid Next best thing, next to kin Got beat up like a thousand more times than I did If I didn't go up next to him And my friends can just keep on talking Going on and on about a bunch of lies When's the last time any of them saw him Or even called him wasn't that bad a guy Drink one for my friend Bobby Ran his car right off the road On accident, on purpose, darling Bobby. Open them gates and let him in On accident, on purpose, darling Those are pretty much the same to him Those are pretty much the same to him Those are pretty much the same Donovan Woods, uh, who has um, pulled over. He's in his vehicle. It's okay, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulled over. Come on, tell him where you are. I'm in the Whole Foods parking lot in Mississauga, Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> what a glamorous suburban. What a glamorous life, huh? Oh, it just yeah, it never ends for me. Glitz. Can I ask you about the last time we talked? 
I'm because it was a it was a cold and rainy day, and you had a you had a toque on, and you had a, a hoodie over the toque, and I thought you were the roadie for Donovan Woods. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that and happens to me a lot. All I could see, I couldn't see eyes or nose. All I could see was a beard. And I thought, oh, that's his reason. He's going to be setting up for Donovan. And it was you. And I was very apologetic. I've never Oh, no. That. This would be an honor to be a roadie. Those guys are the most <laughs> capable men on earth. They are that. And they save us time and time again. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, congratulations on both ways. Now that I've gotten a chance to uh, let it uh, permeate into my uh, my skull. Oh, thank you. Thanks. The uh, in brackets twenty eighteen meant well. Uh, tell the audience about that little bracket. Uh, that's uh, well. That's my that's my label. That's my own label. I like to. It's a joke that I made that about the first time we released something on it was twenty sixteen, which I thought was a horrible year. Sure. So I made a joke that twenty sixteen it meant well, but it didn't really do. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. Re- it wasn't really a great year. So now I, I get to every time I release something, I get to make a joke about the year. <laughs> uh, did he, did how long have you these uh, uh, tunes been percolating, or, or did they come quickly? Um, they they like uh, they're probably spanned out over the in, the entire two years between the last record and the new one, except for the, the lead single "Burn That Bridge" is one that I wrote even before the last record came out, and it. Uh, just sort of hung around and hung around and i nobody believed me that it was good and i just uh i thought it was good and so it just stuck around for years and years eventually we got a version of it we liked who who were these people who i'm, I'm telling you this is this was the easiest record to listen to because all of the tracks made sense one after the other and there's and there's a power ballad you know there's all the things you want you want from a from a record uh there's some upbeat stuff you're writing your writing is is sharp and focused and you know what the hell you're doing oh thank you thanks that's all i'm trying to i'm trying really hard (laughs) i'm trying really hard i appreciate you saying that to to what end donovan to what end to be to have the songs be heard to have a career uh to uh, to sit in the parking lot of a whole foods what what does it mean Oh, that's a good question i mean whole foods is a good grocery store so if i can keep coming here that'd be great yep but uh, um, that's a good question. I think um, I uh, listen. I ask that in brackets because I know that uh, from previously talking to you, you're not exactly enamored with the idea of stardom. No. So, um, so to what end? What would be a comfortable fit for you? I want to be able to play to a thousand people in every city I go to. You know, I think like. That to me is the, I get such a kick out of that, of coming to town and playing and leaving. Um, I think if I can have a lot, a bunch of cities where I can have a good amount of people turn out and want to have a good time, I'll be very happy with that. And I would like to be able to do that until I'm quite old, ideally, you know. I just want to be able to keep writing songs and have an audience for them. The, the, the joy is putting them out. So, if I, I just want to have an audience, you know, I just want to be able to have people that are waiting for me to do it again, you know, because then I'll keep doing it. What's it like letting go of a song? I hear people having trouble with that. I don't have an immense amount of difficulty with that. Okay. I can tell when it's done <laughs> and I can tell when it's not good enough. I have a good sense of that, but putting it out is, uh, I mean, you're, there's always a worry that it's going to, that it doesn't do the thing that you think it does. The thing that it does to you, it doesn't do to everyone else's ears. There's that worry. But generally, I find I'm not often that wrong. I think when you write a song for somebody else and give it away, there's a real pride. There's a real feeling of pride in that in that regard. You know, when you write a song with another artist and they go out and show it off, it feels like that. Feel, I'm always very proud of those songs. What's the best? Co- my own. There is a, there is an element of uh, anxiety in my own for sure. Okay, um, a track full of money, for example. Which is a single, and it's it is a single, right? It's the that's the second single, yeah. But right, the so. current, probably the current one, yeah. There, there's so many singles. I'm sorry, there's so many singles. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. It's it is about touring. Yeah, I think it's kind of about yeah, feeling addicted to to rolling into town, doing your thing, getting okay. a check, and getting out of there. You know. Okay, I think I, I I'm going to throw one of your lines back at you. I think you said this previously. Uh, it's about how after three months, all 
jobs are the same. All days. Yeah. 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 Glamorous. I mean, the, the feeling of, you know, it's like when you buy a new TV for a couple of weeks, it, uh, it's a really looks big. And then after that, it's just the TV. (laughs) (laughs) And you lose, and you lose the changer. Yeah. You just lose the perspective of it. Yeah. (laughs) You lose the perspective of it being wonderful, you know? And I think that that's, the, the thing I'm always trying to do with touring is make sure that I don't make sure it's just not the job, make sure it's just not the TV, you know, make sure I'm always enamored with it. It's I'm, hard to do. I'm so pleased to be able to play this. Donovan Woods, Both Ways is the name of the album. This is Truck Full of Money. Donovan Woods. The album is up both ways, just out now. Fresh. It's got that new car smell. Uh, <laughs> and that is a truck full of money. It's about touring and things. Um, how much of your songwriting, Donovan, comes from um, experience or reading or seeing? Um, it, as, a, as I get older, more of it comes from reading from other people's art. Right. Just because, well, I mean, I'm in the parking lot of a Whole Foods right now 
fewer interesting things happen to me now as an as a as a grown adult you know so um and by interesting i mean like you know shitty things and and uh you know things about falling in love and falling out of love those things sort of happen with less frequency when you're older i found unless you're a member of fleetwood mac i guess but the but so i i think i have to find inspiration from from books and from uh Really, it's books for me. Books and poetry is where I get it. Just words, anything I can get, anywhere I can find pithy language, I want to, I want to find it. CKUA, if you've spent any time in and around it or listening to it, is driven, driven by a passion, an incredible passion for great music with an audience that does exactly the same. Are you still surprised at how much your song, your songs mean to people when you actually meet them? When you, when you perform for them when they tell you yes i'm st- i'm not like a i don't I, I love music and i am always surprised by how much more people i meet love it than me and i feel like i love it an amount that affects my life so you know and at the merch table when you're meeting people or whenever you meet people yeah i'm always i'm surprised every single time by how much uh how much people love it and and it's it's wonderful it's like a, it's a wonderful gift it feels great every time there are three uh, from uh, both ways donovan woods uh there are three what i wrote beside were up tracks so to speak because you do do ballads very well but there's three up tracks they're almost in a row i live a little lie easy street yeah and i don't belong to you which has got a sort of a nice new orleans roll to it on the back end yeah, you described uh, for uh, my pal Strombo. You described uh, Easy Street as full of bop. Yeah, <laughs> I just love that because I'm a bop kind of guy. Uh, I, oh man, bop is like it is a quantifiable renewable resource. It, 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 it has something to do with a snare, how the snare hits or something. But there's a you know a song is either a bop or it's not a bop. I think, in my opinion, you know who gave us most of the bop of this world. Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Oh, yeah? I should listen to it. Well, he w- he was on the snare drum, and he was the band leader. So, yeah, that's where I got my bop from. Okay, let's go back to Easy Street for a second. Um, sure. wh- where the hell did you find that song? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I wrote that with a friend of mine in Nashville, a, a buddy of mine named Logan Wall, who's a writer down there. He's an artist. He's an artist down there in Nashville. That's sort of an up-and-coming country artist. And... Um, he and you know, ostensibly writing a song for him for his career, and I liked it so much that I said, "Don't even look at it. I'm taking it." But the, <laughs> but he had this idea of a chorus that just went Easy Street, and I heard him sing it over that progression, and I was like, "God, that's I just want to hear that. I just want to hear that again and again." And then we started just uh, filling in the blanks. We go, "What is a song? What's a song like Easy Street about? And what uh, what can we get out of it? You know, what can we like? What if we start?" digging around and uncovering why that that phrase and that melody sounds so satisfying and resonant. Yeah. If you happen to be behind the wheel of a car, check this out. This is an easy street. It's all full of bop. This is Donovan Woods from Both Ways. <laughs> Just 
track is called easy street it's new music from donovan woods the album is called both ways it's out now and he is love that song how was the tour with uh with uh, ellen doyle and his beautiful gypsies it's fantastic I, I i they're so good at being on the road it doesn't even feel like the road and uh they're just like alan is uh like a joy to be around he's like being around uh he's like as enthusiastic as he was when he was his first day so it's just like it feels like refreshing to be around those people huh. isn't that nice isn't that, yeah it's so nice that's it's so, so nice. different there's no whining there's no complaining it's just everybody does their job and has a has a good time with it you know it's, and and the bus is like you know i've been on negative buses and this is not that everybody feels great on there everybody knows how to get out of each other's way and be be civil by the way, you meant, mentioned uh, the merch table. Is there a Donovan Woods uh, toque? You know what? There was. There was on the last two, but nobody, nobody bought. So unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> the, there was a fiscal decision that no well, longer where, did. Where, that is, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where the hell were you touring at that time? Yeah, it was. you know what was funny is when they did come out, it was like the spring. So it was like <laughs> okay. moving out of it. They're gone now. But they, I mean, All right. they just didn't do as well as we thought they would do. But you know what? They were tight. They were a tight, a tight fit on a head. No, no, not, no, no, no. Nobody no. wants that. Nobody wants a tight hat. No, nobody. So that's why, that was my opinion of why they didn't work. So by I'm way, sure we'll do another one. By the way, there is a song title right there, Tight Toque. There you go. I know, a tight toque. Everybody knows that feeling, and it's not good. Um, I'm I'm uh, surprised and delighted. Uh, I'm going to play Burn That Bridge, um, which is a, a tune I want to just ask you about, but more importantly, the video as well. So let's take it one thing at a time. Uh, Burn That Bridge. You say you've had, how long have you had that song hanging around? It's three and a half years old now, I think. And how how much did it change in those years? Oh, yeah. The, the demo was just, um, we, this is the third version of it for me. Fourth of it, because it was recorded. I wrote it with, uh, the kids from Port Cities. So it's Priya McKinnon and Dylan Guthrie, a band from Halifax called Port Cities. Mm-hmm. I wrote it with them for their record, ostensibly. We did a demo of it that's just in this house in Sydney where we wrote it you know, in Cape Breton, and it was just piano and guitar. I wrote it on this weird guitar that was in this strange tuning that I could not repeat, and it only had four strings on it. <laughs> and the demo was sort of this, for some reason, it just all worked. And I was obsessed with it. There was just a voice, iPhone voice memo. I listened to it for years and years and years. And then we made this other version of me doing it, and I hated that version. So it sat around. So it didn't make the last record because we didn't think it was that good. And then we've done this. This is the third time I've recorded it, and it's, uh, I, I, feel, I feel like we, we finally got it. Here. You did. You did. Um, was it your suggestion for the video, or was it the director's? It was that video was my idea. I knew I knew from the even when we started to record the song, I knew that if we made a video for it, if it ended up being a single, that I wanted it to be two guys dancing in an apartment. I didn't know that. Um, I, there's there's an old video by this EDM group from France that, that had these uh, two guys dancing in an apartment, and their relationship was sort of uh, in just like nebulous. You couldn't tell what was going on between the two of them. And it, it felt like it was breaking down all these sort of masculine roles and 
um, it was beautiful. And it, and they weren't professional dancers. My idea was to have these sort of professional dancers mm -hmm. in an apartment acting out maybe the motions of falling in love. And, uh, and yeah, the director, when I explained it to him, he went, yeah, I get it. I want to do it. And he just took the ball and ran with it in a, in a, in a major way. You know, I, I didn't have much to do with the actually doing it other than it just being my idea. There was some serious tension in that. Yeah, there's the, those two guys that they got, and there's a Cavante and Josh. And uh, I remember they said they 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 emailed me all excitedly and said we found these guys. We you know we can't stop watching these two. <laughs> and uh, they sent me the screen test video of them. And yeah, from the beginning they were adorable and lovely to to look at. You know, and uh, so we we uh, right from the beginning I knew it was going to be good before we even shot it. And what kind of reaction did the video get? Oh, nothing but like really positive reaction from ninety nine point nine. That negative stuff was like it's so silly. I don't even want to dignify it. But um, you know, lots of messages from people who just are excited about representation and watching a positive um, representation of of queer people and queer people of color yep. that isn't that isn't tied to the idea. Uh, the, the 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 heavy handed notion that like here's how queer people fall in love you know there's there's just nothing about it that's instructive or it's just exactly what it is it's just a, a, a an image of a scene that's going on in some people's lives and I I understand representation and how important it is just from even it has, it's not as important as someone's sexuality or their race of course but even just being a chubby kid I remember if I saw a famous person that was chubby and that was true of the bare naked ladies I mean when I saw them become famous i thought okay maybe they'll let me be famous as a, <laughs> as a chubby kid you know so i i i feel the importance of of that representation in media so it was it's an important thing to me and i'm happy to to be able to do something that feels is feels positive he, uh donovan's going to bring these songs and uh, that attitude uh, to the stage and his toques uh no one toque he's going to be wearing the toque uh, might do a change you never know we we'll switch <laughs> Third, in the show? Yeah. The Vancouver Folk Festival. Well, I'm going to say, oh, yeah. the, the summer. I know you're going to the Winnipeg Folk Fest. Yeah, I'll see you at a Folk Fest this summer, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Well, just come back to the West. That's all we want. We're coming. I'm coming for sure. Be careful out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll be careful in the Whole Foods here when I go in. And that's it for this week's show. Subscribe to the Mulligan Stew podcast on iTunes, Google Play Music, or Spotify. We'll leave you with Burn That Bridge from Donovan Wood's new album called Both Ways. By the way, I urge you to find the video and watch it. It's stunning. I'm Terry David Mulligan. Thank you for listening. Stepping on cracks in the sidewalk Both our eyes are bloodshot And love's coming in so slowly So slowly So slowly Up on the roof on just trying not to get lost And love's coming in so slowly So slowly, so slowly I always knew it We were taking the long way around But we got through it And we're gonna find out now Last breath, first kiss Ain't no coming back from a love like this We gonna burn that bridge We gonna burn that bridge Kiss, ain't no coming back from the